Lee Williams. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, let me start by saying the shadow opposition seems to be having mental illnesses. Why I say this? Because when they are in opposition, they think wise. And when they come in the government, they forget about the poor people. In 2015, yes, you don't know me, but I know you as AP and you AFC, who disappoint we the Guyanese in 2015 when you promised a good life for all Guyanese, but you failed to, you failed to fulfill your promises. <laughs> Honorable Mr. Cox talked about salary increase. You promised 20% increase in 100 days. Instead, you increase your salary 50% and leave the Guyanese people on site. <laughs> Honorable Mr. Speaker, Honorable Royals Ford said this poverty in Amerindian villages is an insult to us, we the Amerindians. We are not in poverty. It's you, the APNU, AFC government, put us in poverty between 2015 and 2020 by snatching away because we care cash run. If I should ask those students in front there, the age they were in 2015, I'm sure they were four years or five years in nursery grade one or year two. You snatch away their 10,000 cash grant and you put us in poverty. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my good friend, Jureta Fernandes, had a fun with numbers, numbers. But I would like to ask Mr. Honorable MP to go on the ground and see what's happening in every village of this country. There is developmental taking place in every Amerindian village, in every region. Mr. Speaker, the opposition speaks about elites, friends and families. Again, Honorable, I would like, I would like to ask Honorable Don Hastings to tell his colleagues that her husband is getting contract in Region 7 because he's our friends and families and the elites. So she needs to tell you that. Yes, because she's benefiting from contract in Region 7. She is getting contract from Region 7. So you need to tell your colleagues on the opposite side. So, Mr. Speaker, with that budget 2024 team, staying the course, building prosperity for all, builds upon the previous budget that were passed since 2020, and underscores the government's commitment to building prosperity for all. It is transformative and paramount to live to, to the lives of Guyanese people. It is the people-centered budget where my government, the PPPC, continues to deliver on its promises outlined in 2020 manifesto. Mr. Speaker, no doubt the Guyanese people benefited from this development in every sector, owing to my government's strategic budget allocation during their tenure in just three years. Mr. Speaker, yearly, increases of disposable income went into the pockets of all Guyanese from coastland to the hinterland. Where, with this being said, I want to highlight some of the successive transformative measures that the PPPC government have done to change the life of Guyanese, especially in the hinterland. Mr. Speaker, prior 2015, my government initiated the Because We Care Cash Grant, again, whereby 10,000 was given to every school child. However, after the, we demit office peacefully in 2015, the AP and UAFC moved immediately to abolish and abandon the program, leaving parents, especially those in vulnerable situations, in darkness with no hope. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, I can recall Honor, Honorable MP, Ms. Carlita McDonald, on her social media platform that they ta tax, that because we care cash grant distribution was a ta waste of taxpayers' money. She continued the following year, labeled it as a political gimmick. Mr. Speaker, I want to state in this honorable house that it is not a political gimmick, but it is an investment in the nation's children, where we are taking away some of the burdens faced by parents, both in public and private schools. So fail to AP and U AFC government. And keeping with our commitment of increasing the cash grant, 
to 50,000 by 2025, the PPPC government administration increased the cash grant from 10,000 to 19,000, then 35,000 and now 40,000, an additional of 5,000 uniform allowance, giving a total of 45,000 per child in 2024. A total of 205,305 school children will be benefiting from this program, injecting 9.2 billion of in disposable income into the pockets of parents, including those on the opposition bench. So we are staying the course. Mr. Speaker, the government sees education as a solid foundation for growth, and therefore investment is improving growth and therefore investment in improving the educational infrastructure across the country. And I choose to highlight Region 7, where school buildings will be constructed and rehabilitated. Mr. Speaker, of course, Honorable, the PPPC government is committed in delivering self and conducive learning environment, which is why, considering the volume of students at Waramadan Secondary School, in Waramadan, a new dormitory will be constructed while a new secondary school will be constructed at Jawala, Upper Mazaruni. This will allow students to learn in a safe, spacious, and modern learning environment. And so I iterated, we stand the course. Mr. Speaker, the, the government has embarked on Gold Scholarship Program, which has awarded 21,000 scholarships to ordinary Guyanese. In contrast to AP and UAFC track record in five years, in Region 7 to date, a total of 698 persons have been awarded gold scholarship. So I dare say numbers don't hide. We stand the course. Mr. Speaker, the PPPC government has undertaken developmental initiative in the Hentelan region in the area of health with expansion health of health facilities in Region 1, 7, 8, and 9. Further, Mr. Speaker, 2024 budget provides for the construction of modern hospitals in Maruka Region 1, Kamrang in Region 7, as well as to upgrade the hospitals in, in Region 9. 1.5 billion is a mark. Also, 5 billion is allocated to retrofit health centers, health pools, and other health facilities countrywide, including the Hensalan. Also, the Bartica Hospital will be reconstructed, replacing the current structure. These hospitals will be outfitted with modern amenities, including a surgical theater at Kamran Hospital to provide special care for our Amerindian people, thereby reducing the need of traveling to Georgetown for specialized service. Mr. Speaker, in 2024, the 2024 budget caters for expansion of technology into our health centers, where the telemedicine program will be expanded to additional 26 villages. There will this will make access to specialized care, consultation, treatment, and diagnosis readily available to the Armenian people in their own community. This program is expected to be implemented across the hinterland region. To date, telemedicine has been ins installed in Upper Mazaruni Region 7, Philippi, Chinawing, Kamrang, Prima, and so far there was a total of 26 consultations with patients from August to December 2023. And from January, there, were, there has been 10 consultations. Mr. Speaker, the hinterland water coverage has grown from 45% of the hinterland population accessing potable water in 2020 to 75%, at the end of 2020 to 83%, by the end of 2023. In 2023, 36 wells were drilled in the hinterland, signaling 1.4 billion investment. And again, I will highlight Region 7 where a number of villages are now accessing potable water. In Upper Mazaruni, several villages are now seeing running water in their homes, including Kamran, Juwala, Ramadan, Prima, while work is still in progress at Kaku, where Honorable Don Hastings resides. Where did a new well is also being drilled in Juwala that will serve the other half of the village. Government intends to achieve 93% coverage in the hinterland by the end of 2024 and 100% by the end of 2025. And so in budget 2024, a minimum of 40 wells are planned to be constructed with a budget of 1.5 billion. Mr. Speaker, my administration remains unwavering in its commitment to the first people through targeted infrastructural, social, and economic development. 
Mr. Speaker, 9 billion, inclusive of 2.7 billion carbon credit funds has been allocated to for advanced development in Armenian villages across the link and breadth of Guyana. Mr. Speaker, since the PPP assume office in 2020, the presidential grant increased significantly from 500,000 to 1 million, from 1 million to 1.5 and 1.5 to 2 million respectively, paving the way for economic growth and community well-being. In 2023, over $9 million was expended to support 243 projects through presidential grant in sectors like agriculture, tourism, transportation, among others. Mr. Speaker, in 2023, 15% of revenue from carbon credit was transferred to 242 villages, totaling to $4.7 billion, leading to implementation of around 500 village lit projects that will improve livelihood, income generation, food security, tourism, and social upliftment. Mr. Speaker, 90% of the village-led projects in Region 7 have been completed, while some projects are, are ongoing in various communities. Mr. Speaker, in 2024, 1.2 billion is allocated to continue direct employment and scale training opportunities through Community Support Officers Program. Over 2,600 young indigenous CSOs will be benefiting compared to zero under the coalition government, who dismissed all 2,000 CSOs in 2015. Mr. Speaker, hinterland agriculture development is paramount to the government, which is why investments were made to provide tractors and trailers along, the, along with implements to over 200 Amerindian villages, so they can utilize these equipment to generate and improve the lives of their villages. Mr. Speaker, I want to put on record, and I'm using one village as an example, but there are other villages that are generating revenue in their village economy using the tractor and the implement. Mr. Speaker, this one village, namely Parima, has generated $4 million in income utilizing the tractor and is projected to generate another $6 million in the next three months, giving you a total of $10 million in the village economic boost. Mr. Speaker, this is the vision of PPPC government, where programs are implemented for villages to sustain their village economy and gain financial independence. Mr. Speaker, the PPPC government has resumed the hinterland electrification program after it was abandoned by APNU-AFC government during 2015-2020 period. We, the PPPC, gov PPPC government, said to the Armenian people in the hinterland, remote, reverend, and rural areas, that there will be light, so there is going to be light in every home in the hinterland. Yep. Distribution of solar system has already started and nearing completion in some regions, while distribution is still going in other regions. So, Mr. Speaker, figures don't hide. 26,398 solar panels have been distributed to date, bringing electricity to many, many homes. Another 3,602 solar panels will be distributed in 2024. Mr. Speaker, upon completion, 30,000 homes whole will benefit from reliable electricity for the first time. Mr. Speaker, my government see our young people as our future asset, and as such, government has allocated $200 million to, to improve community grounds so that our young, our youth, can have proper sporting facility to improve their skills. Around 23 Amerindian villages in Region 7, including Kaku, has benefited from this allocation. And so, Mr. Speaker, the government will continue to invest in training and sporting facilities for young people in various disciplines. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the PPPC government continues to support development of our tourism product in Amerindian villages. To this end, 49 new tourism experiences were launched, 22 of which were launched in 2023 through successful partnership with some communities. In keeping with our manifesto, promise of promoting nature, eco and adventure tourism, culture and heritage, culinary and agri-tourism will be pursued this year. Support will be granted to the development and promotion of Armenian villages. This will help to build the capacity towards establishing and management of their tourism enterprise through community inclusion and good governance practices to create a more diversified tourism product. Mr. Speaker, a sum of 500, 
30 million is allocated to provide opportunities for scale training, upgrading, and lifelong learning by offering competence-based training. Mr. Speaker, in Region 7, the community of Carao has received support as part of Discover Esequibo. Tourism product assessment were conducted in 2023 and found that cultural and mining tourism are worth pursuing. Packaging and development of these experiences will be done in 2024. Mr. Speaker, Purimo officially launched its tourism product in 2023, and after receiving training and support, after receiving support from the Guyana Tourism Authority. Importantly, Mr. Speaker, Purimo is on the catalog for international trade as a minimum eight international trips are planned for 2024. Communities nearby, such as Felipe, Camran, and Kako, the village of Honorable Don Hastings are on radar for support, in which they will be improving new tourism experiences. With these interventions, incomes will be generated and will create employment opportunities for locals, demonstrating that this budget is not only for private sector, but for the local man as well. Mr. Speaker, although... For you, we would need five minutes to conclude. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask that the Honourable Member be given five more minutes to conclude his Thank very good presentation. Thank you, Minister Tashira. Honourable Member, you may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And conclude in five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Transformational infrastructure projects will continue across the country, including construction of roads, bridges, airstrips in every community, thereby making access easier. Our government continues to bridge the gap between the coastland and the hinterland regions through infrastructural program. And in 2023, 6.5 billion was spent in, to support hinterland roads in areas such as Isano, among many others. In 2024, 5.5 billion is budgeted to develop road throughout the hinterland. Yep. The PPPC government continues to support the rehabilitation and maintenance of our airstrip to promote access and economic opportunities between the coastal and hinterland region. Work have advanced on this airstrip, particularly the Purima airstrip, which is progressing and will be completed within a few months. This initiative is expected to boost village tourism experiences, and I'm sure similar projects in other communities will, be, will benefit in the same way. A sum of 2.3 billion is in mark this year to complete construction of this airstrip, rehabilitation and maintenance. Mr. Speaker, there are so many success stories that can be told in this honorable house not only in the Amerindian villages, but in every corner of the country. Right. However, because of the time allotted to me, I cannot divulge in all. With this being said, I voice my support and endorse fully Budget 2024, which will ensure national prosperity for all, create opportunities, provide disposable income, support vulnerable groups, and improve the lives of each and every single citizen. I thank you.